Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and we have a brand new open source level editor to look at today, and it is, frankly, really kind of cool. And on top of that, it is from a professional game developer. It's completely free and open source, so let us jump in. Now, this one is called LED, L-E-D, or Level Editor, makes sense, I suppose, and it's actually made from the guy who worked at Motion Twin. So you can see he's done a lot of game jams. The guy is heavily into the hacks programming language. He worked on all these various different game jams, but in the past at Motion Twins, he's worked on a number of different games, including one of my favorite recently of Dead Cells. So you can see here a number of the games he has worked on in the past. Where is oh, Dead Cells right there. Uh, and, and again, Dead Cells being the top of the list, in my humble opinion, this is a level letter that he has created uh, in an attempt to be uh, user friendly. So it's open source 2D level editor with a strong focus on user friendliness. You can go ahead and download the latest binaries for it. Unfortunately, there only seems to be a Windows based version of it. Now, as mentioned off the hop, though, this is an open source project. It's under the MIT license. And since it's using the hacks programming language, there's no reason why you can't build this for Linux or Mac or Amiga or whatever platform you want to actually build it for. And the instructions for building it are here. So basically, if you can get um, the Hacks build system up and going, which you should be able to, you should be able to build this for your platform of choice. But if you come on in here, you'll check out the releases. Um, and the only one that's available right now is an installer for um, EXE. I don't know what a block map is. Not sure, actually. Uh, but for the other platforms, you should be able to build it without much difficulty. As mentioned earlier on, it is under the MIT license, which is definitely a nice thing. On top of that, uh, there is documentation here for kind of how to work with it, how to work with the auto tiling support and so on. On top of that, there is a Hacks API. So once you've got this in your level exported, there's details on how you can use it in your Hacks-based game. And it is really quite simple to go ahead and access the, uh, the data in Hacks because of some other way that Hacks works. And obviously, this project has been set up for it. Also, your project is exported as a JSON file. So if you're using your own pro different programming language or a different game engine and you want to utilize maps here, you basically just need to use a JSON importer and every single library I can, or every single language or platform I can think of has some kind of a JSON uh, reader or parser at this point in time. All right, so that's the preamble out of the way. This here is LED or LED, and let's take a look at it. So we're gonna start off with, um, we'll do the auto layers advanced. So these are a bunch of the samples that are available. Click here on the samples, you can see them right here. And we're gonna start here. This is showing the auto layering functionality. And this is a really straightforward and easy to work with uh, tool, which was, I guess, the idea behind it. So here is your level. By the way, if you wanna make your level bigger, you could do so, just drag it out like this. And now what this is doing is using auto tile maybe Wang tiles. I'm not sure the technology he uses behind this, but if you want walls, you paint walls. If you want water, you paint water. If you want ladders, ladder, rat lava, lava. It's pretty straightforward. If I hit the uh, shift and R, we actually see the base maps that we are working with. So you see here, you can go ahead and you can just paint some walls. And as you see, they fill out auto tile from the variable sources, uh, all the tile map sources that are available, and it automatically draws those in. So if I wanted to instead, I could switch here and start drawing some water, and we can have our water automatically interact with our uh, grass here. So let's bring out our walls a little bit more like so. And now let's do a ladder that comes up and through right here. So let's switch to ladders. And here we go. And the auto tile automatically figures things out. And then down below, let's do some lava. And at the same time, so you've got a bunch of walls to work with. You can actually hold down shift and create a block at a time. And that's kind of it. You want to make your map bigger? You make your map bigger and so on. It's got a lot of options across the top here. So this is the basic, simple way of creating things. We've also got the ability to create entities. I'll show you that in a second. So if you wanted to do something like drop a tutorial trigger, say you say, you know, so we put our tutorial text here, all your base. There you go. Drops that in so you can have it do various different things. You have different colors, so on. We're going to see the entities in just a second. What we're going to show here before we move on is the tile sets. So the tile sets, you want more details on the tile sets. These are what we are painting uh, when we are drawing with the various different colors that we've been working with. Uh, you see up here, the tile sets are all being pulled in. Pretty straightforward. Set the size, spacing, padding pull the image in. You can have multiple tile sets. We'll also see an example of that in just a second. But you can see here, once you've defined your tile sets, it's really simple to paint. Here we're going, okay, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, here, we're literally just painting with a single color. And that's all you need to do. So you wanna go here, boom, we did that. There's also tools here for uh, flood fill, etc. Anytime you want, 
also, you could just pop right here and get a breakdown of what the hotkeys are. So for example, if I want to fill flood fill, I basically can do a shift click in the space and it will fill in that. So if we want to fill this empty space here with water, we can do so. And again, shift R and we will see the rendered results. So you can do some really rapid map creation here. I just, I, I don't know. I just like the UI. I like the way it works. I like the way it's structured. It is a very clean and effective way of doing things. The only thing I'm kind of missing is a traditional menu. So if I want to do a file exit, it's all in this toolbar right here. So the exit is actually right here. Um, your settings are available here. Basically, you're just setting the tile size for the most part. You can minify your JSON, and that is your output. So save as, and it is a JSON file that's outputted. And again, if you are using the Hacks programming language, there are libraries for automatically handling these levels and easily using them in your own Hackspace game. If you're using a different engine, you're going to have to write a JSON importer. All right, so we're going to go ahead and exit that example out. So now we're going to show you how we kind of all this stuff sort of gets put together. And here is a 2D platformer that was created using much more of the tools. So we've got um, collision maps have been defined, so they're all painted in colors, dirt, ladder, stone, etc. Uh, extra details can be painted in kind of a traditional uh, approach. So we can literally just grab a tile we want to paint with and start dropping it in just like you would in something like a traditional tile map editor, tiled, etc. Uh, we can drop entities into our zone, and of course we can just have a, a background completely. You got rules for creating it. There is just a ton of functionality buried away in here. And then we can start dropping entities in here. So you can see we got the player, we got a chest, we got a mob, a tutorial. For example, the player, player is right. Oops, I actually just created a new player. The player is right here. You'll see when I click the player, we've got some details defined for it. So you see here, there's a number of items or inventory that could be assigned to that player. And like so, and what we can actually do is go into the entity section. And you see here, all of these various different things are defined. So this player, for example, has a name and an items value. A name is just a straight out string. And once again, this is all exposed out in the export of JSON. And again, if you're using hacks, it's just variables you can access immediately and easily. So you can apply fields and values. So you can create new fields of data and details that are attached to each particular entity. So you can give your characters properties in the world that they're going to work with. And then you'll notice we've got a lot of these enums. So here we go. Here's a population of items that are being used. So pickaxe, plant, meat, and so on. You can create your own enum list, and then those enums can be used as a type, like you see here, with the item inventory that is added to the character, like so. And so that way we go back to the map placement in the levels, and we grab something like a player, you'll see here, those that items uh, array is actually here, and you can start adding new values to it. Uh, you also have that value that is exposed out to player. We could change that to, you know, player two or... Um, you know, here we got various different things. Here's another example of loot. It's got the value, the type of thing that can be looted there. And uh, you can also, again, define patrol points. So you see here, it moves here to here and so on. There's a lot of power locked away in here in a very easy to understand uh, user interface. So we've got, again, our layers are defined here. You can define them here as well. So here's your four different layers. Drop into the layer control. You can see here, the layers don't all have to be the same size. They don't have to be the same opacity. Uh, so here we've got like the tile layer right there, a collision layer defined right here, and then all the different values and the colors defined for them. And then there is the background texture being brought in as well. So here's fine-tuned details over your layers. Over here, oh, we already saw entities. We saw enums. And then finally, we have the tile sets, which we saw in action. But here you can see you can have multiple tile sets defined as well. And that's that's kind of the extent of it. It's a really cool tool. So even if you're not doing auto tile stuff, you know, you can use it like you see in this particular example, go back over to here and you'll see pretty traditional tile editing experience. So if I want to go ahead, I could just use this as a normal tile editor. But at the same time, we have all this entity support so we can define entities. So I could create a new entity called, you know, Bob's. So these are the Bob's. Give them a different value or color or we could put a, a an identifier in it for it. Yeah, so let's make Bob this darkish green here. And we could go ahead and change it, bring in a particular tile. So Bob looks like that stretched. Or let's go to the other one. Probably have something better for Bob there. Yeah, so Bob is a pickaxe. Uh, we could have a maximum of one Bob per level and tell it what to do if we make more than one Bob. All right, so there is our Bob. Why did that not? 
Not sure how I actually get that to update over there. But anyways, there's how you can go ahead and create an entity. And once again, you can add various different values to that entity. So if you have RPG Lite or a platformer and you want to put particular details behind instanced enemies, you can do it all right here in this guy. And then when, when you're done, just basically go ahead and do a save. You can save it as, and then it's a JSON file. And that JSON file can, of course, be um, automatically imported into your hacks project of choice and used as defined by the instructions over here. So you see here, there's the JSON file, and here is the uh, the hacks details. And the cool thing is, again, loading up your project or using it, you basically just point to it like so. And once you've got it in place, you load it up, and you can... So there's your level, and then you start accessing values in the level, iterate across all of the types of a certain type in the entity layer, and so on. It's a really cool solution for sure and definitely one worth checking out especially again if you are using the hacks programming language but even if you aren't uh with the json export and the json being for the most part pretty easy to understand this is a really powerful level editor for whatever project you're working on and i got to imagine as the community gets a hold of this one especially with you know all of the source code actually being available uh here on github you're going to have uh hopefully exporters being made for uh, various different game engines and tools, etc. So definitely recommend checking this one out. If you just want a straight out tool, you can just go ahead and you know download it here, at least for Windows platforms right now. You're going to have to build it yourself for other platforms, unfortunately. But it is a really powerful level editing tool that I would say basically his, his uh, goal here, uh, open source 2D level tool with a strong focus on user friendliness, it's user friendly. I got to agree with that completely. And it's quite powerful. So uh, check out LED. Uh, it's, it's definitely a cool one and one to keep an eye on. All right, that's it. What do you think? Let me know comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.